Hello, welcome to the Surf and River Report. Today we're at the Santa Barbara Small Boat Harbor discussing fishing with longtime local fisherman Mike McCorkle. Mike, how do you do? Glad to meet you. Same here. Um, you're primarily fishing halibut at this point, is that correct? Right now, yeah. And uh, your average size fish is how big? I'd say the average size fish is about 15, 16 pounds, a big being 50, small being a limit of uh, size is uh, four pounds in the round, 22 inches, 22 inch fish. Uh, I'm using this net here, that's a, a trawl net. We made a special net here that we use. We have a special area that we trawl in from one mile to three miles. We have a season, we close it for four months when the halibut are spawning. We're the only fishing gear type that does that. Huh. And so it, it just opened up again on uh, yesterday, on the 16th. It's been closed for four months. And so uh, during that time, then we have to go way out. And it's been so windy since the first of the year that we can't fish out there. So things have been pretty slow. Is there a, a less fish available today than there was before the Santa Barbara oil spill? Can you, could you address that? I was fishing an eighth of a mile from the platform when it blew out. I'm the only fisherman around here that knows about that oil spill by actually being next to it. And I was fishing for crabs out there. And uh, What kind of crab do you catch here? We catch, uh, they call them rock crabs. There's yellow crabs you catch out there. They live in the mud. Then there's a red crab and a brown crab that live in rocky bottom. And out there, I was fishing for uh, yellow crabs. And, and so that spill uh, was pretty bad. And uh, this harbor was full of oil. You know, the beaches were full of oil. Um, the thing that, that crabs and lobsters can do is they can eat oil and digest it, and it goes right through them. And so they came out around the rig outside and. Uh, federal waters and they sprayed dispersant on the oil. Then they ran the crew boats back and forth, and stirred it up so it would sink. And they cut all my buoys off of my traps, running through, because you couldn't see them, they were all in oil. Oh. And so that was I had a few traps left and I, I would get the crabs and I'd bring them in here and I'd put them in receiver for a day or two and then I would take them down to Redondo to quality seafood and put them in his tank and he called me up and said, hey, uh, you know, the tank is turning black. The, the, so it's coming out of the crabs and going into the water. He said, I can't buy your crabs anymore. And wow. I said, does anybody complain about them tasting like oil? He said, no. But they look in that black tank and they don't want to buy them. So I lost the crab market on that deal. But basically then, uh, I went and fished halibut with gill nets and they were shooting hay all over the water and it would sink down on top of my nets and, and full of oil and sink and that didn't work. But uh, I don't think, you know, it, it may be a short period, there was a, a, maybe a little less fish, but overall it didn't, it didn't really affect fish. If, you know, oil, if it stays on top of the water, it's okay. Fish are on the bottom. So you're saying, the water. you're saying that the dispersants may be harming sea life under the water? They could be. You have, you have larva that floats on the surface too. So oil maybe isn't, isn't really good for larva. Probably not but, good for much, is it? Uh, oil's good to run your car, okay. run your boat. Okay. You know, but about 12 miles up the coast. And there's a platform there, and there's the biggest natural seeps maybe in the world there. And there's 200 to 250 barrels a day of oil that come out of the ground there around this platform. They have a tent over the major biggest ones, and they capture that, and they bring it over to the platform and pump it ashore before they didn't capture it. But there's an, and also a lot of natural gas that comes up there, and sulfur, H2S gas. But so we go fish in that oil all the time. And you, you won't see now, well, the boat right over there, that green one, see along the water line, how it's all black? Yes. That's, that's from being in Coal Oil Point. But down at the bottom, it has one of the most beautiful bottoms on the coast. 
They're saying about 8,000 gallons a day is coming out of that well, out of that yeah. seep. Seven days a week, all year. People, they don't even realize it. They don't think, you know, that there's oil, but there's plenty of it. it as it comes to the surface, a lot of it evaporates out. So it changes uh, from, you know, real oil into some kind of other stuff. And, and we just, we get it all over our boat. We get it in, in a, our gear, you know. You don't want to go trolling through that. You wouldn't want to be trolling with your fishing pole in the back of a little boat and go through that oil. You'd have it all over your line. You know, but it's there. Some days it's real bad, and some days it's not too bad. There's a, a then apparently there is a, a limited ability for nature to repair itself if the spill or flow isn't too large. Uh, I, you know, as far as around here, I can't speak for any place else. Uh -huh. Just what I read. I know fishermen in Prince William Sound that have gone through that spill up there, and and. Uh, some stuff has happened, but around here, the, nature took care of everything pretty good. They lost their herring industry up in Alaska. That's one of the fishing. Yeah. fishing. They're getting herring now, oh, yeah. this year, yeah. They, the herring fishery is pretty good, it came back. There's a fish that the roe could be affected, because herring spawn on surface, close to the surface. They, they actually, they spawn on kelp. The kelp just floats on the surface. So oil would kill that. They spawn on the kelp leaves. In, in the San Francisco Bay, they take herring and they put it on these barges and hang it in strings, and they get it from Santa Cruz Island because it's nice, certain size leaf, beautiful. And then they herring spawn on that kelp, and then they cut the kelp off. And when you eat it, it you eat the eggs, sometimes are still on the kelp. So if there's oil, the kelp's on the top, bad for herring, bad for herring. Really. How long did the uh, the main part of that oil spill affect you or anybody else around here? Well, the, the worst the worst effect was the, the the oil on the water, you know, and the harbor was closed and they wouldn't let us go out. They wouldn't let us come in. They had just different stuff. But once um, once it, they stopped it and it all went away, things came back to normal pretty fast because this this channel has strong current so it cleans itself out all the time you know if, if it was up in an inlet or somewhere where you don't have the, the current like that I think things may be a little bit different but here in a year there was no you would never know there was an oil spill so we sent it to Redondo Beach there's natural seepage off Redondo Harbor right, right. off the breakwater there's I know I used there. to get I used to get tar all over my yeah. feet when I swam down here yeah yeah for the surf and river report this is Bill Rogers at the Santa Barbara Harbor. Okay, well, Thank you, Michael. Environmental impacts.